Well, South Korea is much more than a never-ending struggle between teenage boy bands and teenage girl bands. It's a cultural mecca. It's also one of Asia's countries that investors are most focused on. It's a haven for manufacturing, automobile production, and electronics. And on today's ETF battles, we've got a triple header contest between three South Korea ETFs. So who wins the battle? You're about to find out. Stick with us. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Listen, folks, I'm a pretty well-traveled guy. In fact, I've been everywhere. I've been to Reno, Chicago, Fargo, Minnesota, Buffalo, Toronto, Winslow, Sarasota, Wichita, Tulsa, Ottawa, Oklahoma, Tampa, Panama, Ottawa, and even La Paloma. But I have never been to South Korea. And in this episode, we're going there. Because today's ETF contest is a triple header. We've got three South Korea ETFs, one from iShares, one from Franklin Templeton, and another from Direction Investments. So which ETF wins today's battle? Well, you're about to find out. Now, this battle request comes from viewer Wesley West, who has been stalking me over the past month or so with repeated requests for this specific South Korea ETF matchup. So Wesley, thank you for your patience. Ask and you shall receive. We're finally doing it. Judge in today's contest is none other than Mike Akins from ETF Action and John Davey from Astoria Portfolio Advisors. Judges, welcome back. It's great to see you. It's great to be here, Ron. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Ron. So we're going to go through each one of these four battle categories one at a time. You, our judges, are going to pick your favorite ETF. And then at the end of the show, we're going to declare an overall winner. We've got our battle categories ready. My scorecard is also ready. By the way, our judges can opt for a split decision. They can also nominate wildcard ETFs. It's completely up to them. So we're going to begin with the first category, which is cost. We'll start with you, John. So get us started. Sure. So FLKR, the uh, Franklinton FTSE uh, South Korea ETF, that is the cheapest one at nine basis points. Uh, EWI is coming on at 59 basis points. Uh, now the direction products, you know, there's leverage in there. So, you know, those are going to be like a very different animal compared to a Delta one product. So you're going to pay for that implicit leverage that it provides. So that one's much higher. It's well over a percent. So here the battle category winner, I would say is FLKR nine basis points, pretty cheap, but you know, know what you own, look under the hood, look at the returns. That's really the best indication of how you should be using ETFs. Thank you, John. That's a strong start. Mike, we'll shift to you. How do you see it in terms of cost? Yeah, so this is going to be a common theme throughout for me on this battle category, and that is how are you using this product? Are you using it as a strategic um, allocation to get South Korea for a long-term period, or are you using it tactically because of specific factors that make you want to invest in South Korea? I bring that up because Clearly, the Franklin Templeton product is by far the cheapest at nine basis points. And if you're going to hold that product for a year, two years, five years, 10 years, that expense ratio is going to make a difference. It even plays out, as you will see against EWI and FLKR over the three-year time period. Almost all of the outperformance of FLKR is due to expense ratio. But, and there's a big but, if you're going to start trading these products, EWI, Y actually has significantly more liquidity and its average spread, meaning the, the bid ask between what you pay to get in and out of the product is 24 basis points cheaper than FLKR. So a round trip for the average investor into FLKR, meaning a buy and then a sell, is going to cost 48 basis points more in FLKR than it would in EWI. Therefore, where I'm going with this is it's really a split decision based on how you're going to use it. It's a long-term out strategic allocation. You plan on buying and getting in overweighting South Korea for a long period of time. You want to go with FLKR. If you're looking more tactically, I would suggest EWY. And then really, if you want to go tactically, of course, um, the leverage products provide an excellent way to get that added access, but it comes with some caveats that we'll get into later on. So that was my long explanation of split decision. All right. Very good. Thank you, Mike. That brings us to exposure strategy. So we're going to get a little bit under the hood and take a look at all of these ETFs. So Mike, you're still up. Uh, give us your take on exposure. Yeah, so from an exposure perspective, you're looking at very, very similar products and what they own. In fact, 
on the leverage product, it does track the same index and actually uses the EWI ETF to gain access. So it's literally the same holdings, of course, with the big caveat that one's looking to get triple um, times your daily reset returns. Uh, daily reset's a big caveat that we're gonna talk about in the performance category. So I'm just gonna focus in on FLKR and EWI and just really say that from a broader allocation perspective, FLKR um, and EWI are going to be very similar. There's 90% overlap in their overall allocations here. The difference is FLKR goes a little deeper into the market, has more holdings than EWI. As a result, is a little less concentrated at the top 10 holdings. An example, Samsung is at over 20% and EWI um, and 16% in FLKR. But I really think that it's uh, ultimately, if I was going to pick, um, use this strategically, I'd use FLKR because I like the broader deeper into the market. I'm picking this strategy to get into South Korea. Um, so I'll give the nod to that, but arguably exposure strategy from what you're holding perspective, not much difference in this battle. Thank you, Mike, that's solid analysis. We now move to John. How do you see it in terms of exposure strategy? You know, there's not much more to cover. I mean, Mike kind of knit the, you know, nailed it on the head. You know, I still personally would give a little bit more um, of an edge to EWI. I've just, you know, as portfolio managers, you know, you get cash inflows, you got to, you know, buy a little bit more of an ETF or, you know, we have these tolerance bands at a story portfolio advisor. So if we're going to pull, let's say 5%, you know, Korea position in our models and, and we are favorable on emerging markets, we like Korea, we like Samsung, you know, if it goes to, if it, if it starts at a 5% and the position rallies to 7%, we generally will rebalance back to our, our original 5%. So you wind up doing a lot more trading and rebalancing than you think. So I just, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of liquidity. I think you pay a, a bit of a premium and we spoke about that in the first battle category, but um, you know, for, for the exposures they are virtually the same, I just, I'm going to play a little bit more uh, attention to you know, the overall liquidity and bid offer, and you, you get such a big premium with respect to EWI compared to FLKR. So I know Mike said about being a strategic asset allocation, nine bips, but you'd be surprised once you actually start to try and trade and rebalance, you know, these Korean ETFs, like, you know, EWI will just be super liquid compared to FLKR. So nothing else to talk about, honestly, Ron, it's like the same thing, EWI, three times direction levered product is based on that EWI ETF, just leverage in that front. So the, uh, you know, I, I think the exposure is virtually a lock. So it's, let's say it's a split decision from my standpoint. Okay. So I got you down for a split decision on exposure strategy. Thank you, John. Now we shift to performance. So John, you're still up. Which of these three ETFs jumps out, out at you in terms of performance? Definitely the three times lever, just because Korea has done well this year and emerging markets broadly have done well. Um, you know, there's this reflation trade in the marketplace. So, you know, anything kind of economically sensitive has done well. You know, emerging markets, you know, have done relatively well uh, with low interest rates, you know, the dollar being weaker. Um, so the direction three times levered ETF product is up, you know, 16.7%. The other two ETFs are up about, you know, 8%. In the last one year, uh, the direction products up 430 percent, whereas the you know the two other Delta One products are up you know 88 to 91 percent. So, I would give clearly the 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 edge to the direction product if you did happen to have such a strong view that you would have bought it earlier this year or had you bought it you know a year ago. You know, there's compounding issues when you trade in leverage ETFs. We can talk about that in a little bit. You really got to be careful you know, how long you hold these products. Um, but from a performance standpoint, I would say the direction products, you know, clearly wins that battle. Thank you, John. Mike, how do you see it in terms of performance? Yeah, I mean, it would have been would have been great if I could go back uh, a year from now and uh, go back in time and, and load up on uh, KORU. Um, clearly, South Korea has been one of the top performing countries over the past year. In fact, out of the 48... Country countries that are represented by an ETF, South Korea is the number one performing um, country ETF over the past year. As a result, the, the three-time leveraged 
strategy that absolutely crushed it. A um, couple of notes, and I'll pick my winner here, um, that I would look at is one, as you look at longer time periods, um, it's very interesting to note that both EWI and FLKR up about 10% over the past three years, but KORU is down 6%. And so logically that doesn't make sense. How could it be up 430% over the last year? Both of the non-leveraged products are positive over the past three years. And that really has to do with what John alluded to with daily reset. And it's extremely important to note that when you're using these strategies, um, if you have a strong opinion on South Korea or any other strategy that's got a two-time or three-time leverage, they can be excellent vehicles to take um, to get that leverage in a convenient one-stop trade. But it does not mean over long time periods you're going to track your index. And in fact, oftentimes you diverge wildly based on that daily reset um, avenue. So that's just one note. The other thing is I would note that FLKR is outperforming on an annualized basis, EWI, by about 117 basis points over the past three years. A big part of that is the 50 basis point expense ratio difference. So John's absolutely right. If you're trading this and rebalancing it, you can eat away those returns quickly with the lack of liquidity. Um, but it is a note to, and a nod to the, to the concept of why ETFs are so popular to begin with and why expense ratios matter, because over time, expenses add up. So I'm going to give the, the win here on performance. I'm going to split it out between FLKR for the lower expense ratio um, and KORU because South Korea has been the top performing country across the board and clearly um, leverage has paid off over the, last, over the last year. All right. Thank you very much, Mike. Now we move to the mystery battle category. One of my favorite categories, this is where our judges can pick that one factor or multiple factors that they believe are crucial to today's matchup. So Mike, you're still up. Tell us what is your mystery battle category and who wins it? Yeah, so I'm gonna go a little up beyond just these three ETFs. I'm gonna talk about core versus satellite um, investing and talk about the ETF toolbox here. And I think country and region ETFs are a great example of why ETFs are so popular and why they continue to grow in their breadth, both in the proliferation of number of strategies as well as the assets following them. And that is, think about the simplicity of saying, look, I know what's going on in South Korea. Um, they've got a lot of stimulus going on. There's a lot of um, pro reasons why I would wanna over um, allocate to their editor of the market right now. And I'm just making this up as I go, but just talking about being able to make a single trade into that um, tactically. And you know, if you think about actively managing a portfolio, there's kind of top-down asset allocation and there's bottom-up security selection. Country and region ETFs are a perfect example of how to make an active bet based on asset allocation. Um, last year, just over the past year, the 48 e countries that are represented by an ETF, there was over a 62% difference between the top and bottom performing country ETF. So clearly a lot of opportunity there to add value if you are doing research at the country level, and there's no better way to get access than the ETF marketplace. So my ETF uh, mystery category is just the power of ETFs and using them in a tactical manner. And I country ETFs are a perfect example of that. Thank you very much, Mike. So basically 0 for 3 is your mystery battle category. <laughs> they, they all- No, it's or, 3 for 3. 3 for 3, yeah. 3 that's, for that's, 3. That's, that's, that's a better way of putting it. So very good. So three-way tie. That may be that's the right. first three-way tie in a mystery battle category we've ever had on this program. So congratulations for making history, Mike. Um, now we shift to John. John, what is your mystery battle category and who wins it? You know, um, so Mike brings a good point. So, you know, we are um, asset allocators at a story advisors, different from some of your other judges. We actually put like real money to work, right? So we're benchmark oriented, which means by definition, we're tracking like an MSCI ACQUI benchmark. Um, so by definition, we have to have an allocation to emerging markets because emerging markets make up, you know, let's say 10% of, you know, the ACQUI benchmark. Um, so the question is, is what Mike's alluding to is that you could just buy, you know, IEMG or EEM and get your broad-based allocation, or you can do what we do at a store advisors, which is we're going to have our broad-based allocation towards IEMG, let's say, although we use a different product, 
And then we lay on top of that a tactical tilt where we'll have a position in EWI, let's say, or, you know, the FLKR. Um, so, you know, you, you want to be careful in terms of when you take that satellite versus core approach. I think for me, like, you know, all this, you know, 5% more you get in Samsung and EWI versus, you know, 5% less weight in FLKR. You know, if you look at the Sharpe ratio, the risk-adjusted return, the Franklin product actually has a higher risk-adjusted return. So how much return are you generating per unit of risk? So I'll give the battle category winner of my mystery of risk-adjusted returns to the Franklin product. But really, in all instances, I would still use the EWI. Thank you very much, John. Now your overall battle winner. So recap it. Give it to us. John, you're up. Yeah, I mean, I think EWI, it's big, it's liquid, it's been around for a long time. You know, you can back test it, you can look at historical valuations by using tools like Mike's firm, ETF Action. You know, there's just a benefit of being in the marketplace for a long period of time. You get a sense of how the product trades, how it reacts, how the portfolio manager deals with, you know, changes and rebalances. I just pay such a big premium to liquidity. If you go right now and try and trade the Franklin Templeton product, you know, two o'clock on, on, on a Monday, you know, good luck. You're going to pay a lot of bid offer. Whereas EWI, you know, I still think you can get a lot of your risk off. So I'm going to give the bad category one at EWI. Um, now, if you've got some massive high conviction bet that you think Korea is going to do well and you're willing to hold it for a, a couple of days a week, then yes, all by, by all means, go with the direction product. Uh, but for, for, I think, a lot of this audience that listens to this show, I think EWI is going to be your bet. Thank you, John. Mike, your last opportunity to weigh in with your overall winner. Well, sadly, Ron, I can't give you an overall winner from a perspective of these strategies are so similar um, from a standpoint of actual companies they own. Um, but what I can leave you with is if you're looking to trade one for one tactically, EWI is your best move. It's a tactical investment. It's crazy liquid. Unless you have a very high conviction, then KO. Uh, RU is your best trade because you can get that leverage in a single trade and you can um, layer on that conviction. However, if you have a reason to allocate long-term strategically, FLKR over time, especially looking out three, five, 10 years is going to add value because it is cheaper. Um, it goes down to the whole concept of why ETFs have grown so much in the first place. And that that is when you start extrapolating out returns over decades and not days, months, weeks, and even a year, that expense ratio is huge. Um, and I think from that perspective, FLKR um, is a, the best strategic investment for a long-term holder. All right. So thank you very much, uh, Mike, for giving us your overall winner. And according to my battle scorecard, we've got a split decision and uh, our judges uh, had different opinions on cost. They also had different opinions on exposure strategy and also different uh, opinions on their overall battle winner. I think the key takeaway from today's program is really how are you using the ETF in the portfolio? Is it uh, strategically as a short-term trade or maybe a longer-term trade? Um, John mentioned the importance of liquidity. That's also a huge consideration, not just the cost. So keep that in mind in terms of thinking about if you're interested in investing in South Korea, how are you going to use that, that ETF in, in implementing that trade? And that will give you the answer for being able to pick the right ETF to solve the, the problem that you're trying to, to hit. So again, great job to, to Mike and John for helping us sort through that. This South Korea ETF clash and man, I'm going to need to de decompress after today's episode by listening to my Blackpink playlist. But before we go, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tell us which ETF battles that you would like to see in our next episode. And tell us why. You can do that in the comment section below, or you can hit us up on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. I'm Rhonda Leggy. Kudos again to our judges for helping us sort through today's battle. Thanks for watching. I'm Rhonda Leggy. And we'll catch you next time. Watch the battle before you invest.